Hi, right, today I'm going to be talking to you about data processing using the NUTS processing software and be giving step-by-step -step instructions on processing data. Today I'm going to go over a couple different things with you, uh, 1D carbon spectra and depth data processing. Both of these are carbon experiments and are processed very similarly. The C13 data is going to be processed using a macro. We'll simply start the macro and it will query you for which file you want to process. The macro will automatically Fourier transform, peak pick, and zoom to a specific region that we set up ahead of time. And I'll show you how to set zero and a new peak pick threshold so that we get good peak pick values for everything. The depth spectra is processing the data in a very similar way. We're going to run a macro and choose a file to process. The macro will Fourier transform, zoom to the same region, and stack plot the three different depth spectra. And I'll just show you how to kind of scale the stack plot and print the spectra. So with that, let's get started with processing carbon data. Once you've installed the demonstration software, the NUTS icon should be on your desktop. Let's go ahead and start the NUTS program and click OK in the license window. Again, today we're going to be using the right-click pull-down menus to do most of the processing, and today we're going to learn how to use the run macro command. The run macro command is uh, used to first specify a macro to run, and then each macro will ask you what file you want to process. So let's start the run macro command. We're going to choose the carbon macro first so we can process some carbon data. And then the macro right now is asking us what file would you like to process? So let's go into the data folder and choose the propylbenzoate C13 data. Again, Every data file is appended with what type of experiment it is. You notice there's some depth spectra, some proton spectra, some signal spectra. We'll choose the purple benzoate C13. And notice that the spectrum came up. Everything's automatically phased. Peak picks are on the screen. This window comes up in order to do a couple things. It shows you what parameters were used to acquire the data, but more importantly, uh, it allows you to put notes on the spectrum that will show up on the printout. Um, username, click OK. So a couple things to look at on here. Um, you can scale the spectrum with the page up, page down commands or the up arrow, down arrow. You can also roll the mouse wheel. We want to scale this so that the peak picks are not touching the tops of the peaks. Another thing to notice, this program did this macro did not set the TMS peak to zero. It's pretty close, but it's not right on zero. And finally, the two small peaks over here did not get peak picked. And we would like to know what the chemical shift of those are. So first thing we're going to do is work on getting the TMS set to zero. We're going to use the zoom command to zoom in on that peak. So let's enter the zoom subroutine. Recall from the last episode, we drag through and then do the control E command or right click again. You can barely see the TMS peak, but it is much taller than the rest of the peaks. And we are going to use the set zero command under the peak pick subroutine to move the axis so that the axis point zero lines up with the TMS peak. I'm going to do a control F command to bring back the full spectrum. We can also have done that from the zoom subroutine show full spectrum. I'm going to scale the spectra so we can see the peaks again. Now that we have TMS set to zero, I want to show you how we easily peak pick these peaks in a carbon spectrum. Click and hold the mouse in the background so that the horizontal line is just below the tip of the smallest peak that you want to peak pick. While you're doing that, type the letter M 
that will set a new minimum height threshold. And you notice everything above that horizontal line that is peak picked. We would like to zoom so that the chemical shift is 220 ppm down to about minus 10 ppm. I'm going to do it manually first. I'm just going to highlight this region and zoom to that region. I'd like to show you one other thing though. While you're in the zoom subroutine, notice the ZO on the cursor. You can type the letter F and you can put in the exact numbers that you want to zoom for the zoom region. 220 minus 10. The reason I like doing that is when I'm comparing two or three different sets of spectra, I like to have them all on the same exact scale so they're easier to compare. Now that we've got this carbon spectrum of propyl benzoate processed, I want to leave that on the screen while we process a depth spectrum for the same molecule. So I'm going to just minimize that and we will open up another version of NUTS. Similar to the carbon, we are going to use the run macro command, which will lead us to the macro folder. We're going to process using the depth macro. Let's start the depth macro. Open The depth macro will ask us what file do we want to process. We go into the data folder, and there's our propylbenzoate.depth. Open that. Again, put in, uh, I don't want to put in debt. That will come out on the printout, which is nice. So will the username. And all these parameters come out on the printout. So it's really nice to have that in there. Now, the about the only thing that you have to do as far as the depth goes, is make sure that the middle spectrum, the middle spectrum will always be the tallest. We'll talk about why at a different time. We're just, I'm just going to use the mouse wheel or the down arrows to up and down arrows to scale that. Now, one thing that you'll notice that's different about the depth, all three depth spectra have this small peak that was in the middle of the uh, CHs for the benzene ring is gone, and the carbonyl is gone from all those. Let's go back and look at the carbon spectrum. We'll see those again. There's the small single substituted carbon on the benzene ring, and the carbonyl carbon are both in the carbon spectrum, but only carbons with directly attached hydrogens show up in the depth spectra. The information that we get from this depth series is very important and useful. Besides the quaternary carbons disappearing from all the spectra, in the middle spectrum, which is a depth 90, only CHs show up. So we've identified now all these peaks in the middle here are CHs because they point up in the depth 90 spectra. In the top spectrum, the depth 135, CHs and CH3s point up. So we know now that this peak over here is a CH3. And finally, CH2s point down. So we know that there's two CH2s, a CH3, and several carbons on a benzene ring. When we're ready, we can go to the print command. Remember, use landscape mode when you print this and off we go. I'm just going to cancel for now. So as you can see, processing carbon and depth data is very easy. And using macros to process both carbon and depth data makes our data processing even easier.